let's create a, an absolutely selfish world. That means what I want for myself, I want for everybody in the world. Thank you, Sadhguru, for the wisdom. We would now open up the questions for the floor. And uh, if anyone, you can raise your hands. Uh, thank you very much, Sadhguru, for the exciting. You? Hey, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for the exciting discussion. Uh, so, I wanted to ask normally, as students, we start the term very exciting, very excited, and we do things very, as you said, blessfully. But by the end of the term, we, with a lot of outside pressure, we move from blissful to stressful. So my question is how to maintain that positive or pleasant state of experience? <laughs> well, you need to understand the simple mechanics of how this functions. See, now all of us are sitting. I don't want to pick on all of you. Let's say three or four of us are sitting here. Each one of us is sitting in our own different ways. The geometry of your body and your chemistry are very related. How you hold your body will determine <laughs> I'm a quick learner. Listen, this, this also. No. <laughs> so, uh, the simple thing that we need to learn is, we become conscious of how we hold our body, how we breathe, how we walk, how we move, and also how our thought, emotion, other things function within us. It just takes… you have the necessary awareness and intelligence, it's just never been applied. You're busy applying it to the world. By applying it to the world, a few situations in the world may change, but your experience of life will not change. See, as a generation of people, never before another generation of people knew these kind of comforts and conveniences that all of us are enjoying, isn't it so? Hello? Aren't we the most comfortable generation ever? Yes. We are. But are we the most joyful generation ever? No. So obviously, by changing the outside situation, we can create comfort and convenience. You cannot create well-being because human experience happens from within. There is… this is not just a random thing, there is an entire science. As there is a science and technology to address external well-being, there is a whole science and technology to address inner well-being. Today our education systems… I'm sorry, I'm not making a critique of an institution like this. Our education system from kindergarten onwards, there is nothing about you. You're reading about the worm, you're reading about the butterfly, you're reading about the plant, you're reading about the globe, you're reading about other galaxies, nothing about this one. Yes? But human experience is one hundred percent manufactured within you, is it so? Have you seen in the same given situation, one person is thoroughly enjoying it, another person is immensely suffering it? So obviously it's not the situation, isn't it? You can do whatever you want. Because they did not handle it properly, they invented heaven. Okay. <laughs> heaven means what? Should I go into this? No. Anyway, everything is fantastic out there. That is the marketing. Why nobody wants to go today? Because they don't know if it's really there. <laughs> when somebody believes that it's really there, they will do totally dastardly things. All others, uh, just a little psychologically, hold on. Food is best. If you're, you know, in Hindu heaven, food is <laughs> fantastic. If you're a <laughs> if you're a foodie, you must go to Hindu heaven. In another place, all those white-gowned ladies are just floating around in the clouds. If you like that kind of ambience, you go there. 
In another place, you'll encounter virgin problems. If that's what you're looking forward to, that's where you go there. But you must understand this. You go there only, what is the qualification to go there? You have to die. Hello? Yes. Is that so? In LSE also? <laughs> if you have to go to heaven, you have to die. When you die, we usually either burn or bury or cut you and put you to birds. Depending on your culture, we do whatever. One thing is, this body is a loan from this planet. When you're done with it, you must put it back. If you've not done anything ecologically sensitive, this is one thing you will do, all right? So you left your body here and went to heaven. When you don't have a body, what do you do with good food and virgins and all this stuff? I'm asking. These are all bodily issues, isn't it? Hello? When you have a body, all these things. So, I want to down the heavens. People should eat good food here, hmm? People should float around like angels here. Whatever lustful longings they have when they're young, they must finish it here. They should not become sick, dreaming that something is waiting for them up there. What do you think? Should we down the heaven? And above all, and above all, do you have any proof? Do you have any proof to prove to me that you are not already in heaven and making a mess out of it? Do you have any proof? You are already in heaven making a terrible mess out of it. If you sort yourself out, you will see this will feel like heaven. Of all the planets we know, in whatever explorations we have done in this universe, this is the best place. Do you agree with me? Yes. You're already in heaven, why are you such a mess? You need to sort this out. The only reason why you're such a mess is you're not fixed like other creatures. For all the other creatures, nature put two lines between which they live and die. But for human beings, there's only bottom line, there's no top line, that's what they're suffering. If you're suffering your limitations, I can understand. You're suffering your freedom, that is what is the disaster right now. If you were fixed like every creature, you wouldn't be stressed, isn't it? All other creatures are like this, stomach full, life settled. <laughs> but you are made like this, stomach empty, only one problem, stomach full, one hundred problems. <laughs> this is simply because you are not able to handle your own faculties. We gave you a supercomputer, but you did not read the user's manual. That's all your problem is. Thank you. Namaskaram Sadhguru. Uh, I would request you to please guide us more on the issue of whole interpretation of religion, as you said, that it has to be a personal matter. Uh, religion as a concept, as I, you've mentioned before, it was a new concept for India and its surrounding places earlier. But people drew lines on those religious and social cultural aspects as well, and which eventually led to conflicts. So how do you see inner engineering, yoga as the way of resolving that conflicts and turning towards the inner self and breaking the barriers of religion? Well, uh, you want a prediction or you want a plan? Those who are not incap… those who are incapable of making a plan and executing that plan always look forward to predictions. What prediction means is, you just hope it will happen. You are not willing to lend your life to make it happen. That's why I'm telling you all of you young people, should strive towards it, of course. People will deride you, somebody wants to kill you. I have never abused anybody. But people want to kill me, death threats keep coming. What for? Simply because you ask questions for which they have no answers. 
I have never abused them, I have not abused their gods, I have not abused anything. I'm just asking questions, you went to heaven all right, but without a body. So how are you going to eat food, good food, and how are you going to do anything with these virgins? What are you going to do when I ask them? Why are they feeling so insulted? So this is one way, for a long time it's been like this, for a couple of thousand years. One way to handle questions is kill the questioner. It's been an effective way till now, but no more. It's not going to work like that because today not just one person is going to ask questions, a billion people will ask questions, yes? Once you raise a question, the whole world knows this is a question and everybody will ask the question. There was a time where only one person raised a question in a village or a town and you killed him and the question was over. Those days are over. So this is why you don't have to abuse anybody. But you must ask relevant questions, isn't it? Hello? Daring relevant questions, whatever matters in our lives, should we not ask questions at least, even if you don't have answers? You don't have to abuse anybody, you don't have to deride anybody, but you must ask questions because if you ask three intelligent questions, ninety percent of the scriptures on the planet and all the three heavens will collapse right now. With your blessing, I've started my journey. One question I'd like to share that we meet people we meant to meet or is it a destiny, luck or fate? Have you just fallen in love or something? <laughs> huh? <laughs> no, no, because I don't want to disturb the romance. Say, look at it this way, since you woke up today morning, till this moment, let's leave the sleeping time. Since you came awake fully, from that moment to this moment, your body has been doing its things, isn't it so? Physical activity is happening, both outwardly and inwardly, happening or no? That's why we're alive, it's happening. Mental activity has been happening. Emotional activity is happening, energy activity is happening. How much of these four dimensions of activity <coughs> did you perform consciously from the moment you came awake till now? How much do you think? What percentage? What percentage? Well below one percent, believe me. When you perform activity consciously, less than one percent, over ninety-nine percent is unconscious. Everything will look accidental, isn't it? Hmm? Everything looks like divine intervention because ninety-nine percent of the time you're unconscious. Do one thing, when you drive today to wherever you drive, ninety-nine percent of the time close your eyes and drive. <laughs> you will see how many people you will meet. But if you drive with your eyes open, fully conscious, you're not going to meet anybody like this with a bank, hmm? Things will happen in a completely different way. How conscious we are will determine how much of your destiny you determine. How unconscious you are determines how much of your destiny is accidental. Everything that's accidental, we want to attribute it to some other force elsewhere. Now this must stop. We must understand, it is we. Is there no other force? Of course, you didn't make the creation nor did I, all right? You did not create this creation nor did I create this creation, there is. But that is a different dimension altogether. And what is happening with you right now, is entirely your making. From where you come from in India, is the only culture on the planet which constantly told you, your life is your karma. Karma means your doing. Your life is your making. Whatever may be happening, you may be able to logically figure out why it is so, you may not be able to figure out, but still you know one thing, 
if this is happening to me, this is my making. This is the greatest empowerment you can have when you understand my life is my making. Whatever happened till now, it doesn't matter. How will you make your tomorrow? I'm asking you. If you clearly, clearly know one hundred percent, my life is my making, how will you make the next moment, how will you make a tomorrow, how will you make your future in the most beautiful way, isn't it so? That's what needs to happen. So I have two questions and one is related to the last thing Should one said. at a time, I'm a simple guy <laughs> Because you were just talking about our life little, is... Let me close. Yeah. Sorry. So that we make our lives, right? And what about... What about the people that have it very hard? What about the people that are exploited sexually? What about the people that have been... Like in the worst scenarios for many years of, of drudgery? I think it's so unfair. I, I do agree with it, but I think it's unfair to say that this is the responsibility of the individual to be okay. Because for some people no, no, it's no, just you, so you, much harder. You, see, I, I made a simple statement, you're making a philosophy out of it. Okay. Okay. There are many segments of society, please. Thank you. Uh, there is a second question. You can hold on to the microphone and sit down, it's okay <laughs> <laughs> See, there are various levels of life happening on the planet. In London city, there are richest people living in highest levels of pleasure and comfort, there are people who are living the worst possible life within this city, yes or no? Yes. You don't have to go all over the world to see that, right here. So, uh, if we create a society where there is such disparity, I'm asking, both you and me, are we responsible for this? That was my second question. No, no, we'll come, we'll come, I just answer the <laughs> question. I'm asking the question now, <laughs> are we? Yes, Maybe we can't change it tomorrow morning, I know that. But are we? If we see we are, we will start working towards a solution. Otherwise, we'll try to make a living out of problems. A whole lot of people in this world have invested so much in the problems, they're only making a living out of problems, evolving philosophies of problems. The only thing that matters is a solution, isn't it? Huh? Not in how many ways we glorify the problem. The only and only thing that matters when there is suffering for a human being is a solution. Yes or no? Whether it comes from up, down, whichever way the hell it comes, who cares? Whether it comes from heaven or hell, we don't care. When somebody is in some state of suffering, the only thing that matters is a solution. So if solutions have to happen, who created the problems? You can say it's this guy or this person or that person. No, no, we as human beings have bread problems, isn't it? When I have a glass of water, I am not willing to share it with the person sitting next to me. Why do you expect a man who has a billion dollars to share it with somebody? I'm asking. Hello? When you are not willing to share the little things that you have, you have a philosophy, why are the rich people not sharing it with the poor people? They will not. Because your argument is, but I don't have enough. But even they don't have enough. <laughs> they may have hundred billion dollars, but they don't have enough, that's what you need to understand. This is the nature of human being. You may think they have too much, but they don't have enough. As you don't have enough, nobody has enough in this world. Yes or no? <clears throat> Only thing is just this, that's why I told you, your service, sacrifice, selflessness, all these things, these are all con jobs. That's why I told you, at least what is the worst in you, your greed, expand your greed towards everybody's well-being. We can work towards it. Will all the problems go away tomorrow morning? No, we can only work towards it, isn't it? If all of us work towards it, will it go away? Yes. Hello? Yes. If every one of us really strive towards it, will it go away? Yes, it will, isn't it? Will it or will it not? It will. But till now, the problem has always been about how to get all the human beings on one page. 
There are different nations, there are different races, there are different religions, skin color, this nonsense, that nonsense, every kind, all right? For the first time, for the very first time in the history of humanity, two things have happened. One thing is, our survival is better organized than ever before. There is enough resource, technology, for every problem we have a solution at hand. And for the first time, we can sit here in this room and speak to the entire world. Never before this was possible. See, many people have come, he, he mentioned names, Rama, Krishna, Buddha, Jesus, this one, that one, all kinds of people. When they spoke, hardly ten people heard. Yes or no? This is the first time you can sit here and speak to the entire world. When such a privilege is there, is it not your and my responsibility to say the right things? Right things to put all human being, beings on one page? Hello? If we do this, because never before this was possible, now it is possible. As a generation, will we make it possible or we just a wine generation pointing fingers at each other and we will die like this? This is the choice we have. This is the reason why I'm going from university to university, though I avoided every damn university when I was your age. <laughs> now I'm going to university to university because this is an opportunity which is for the first time in the history of humanity that if we want to change something, we can because we have the resource, we have the technology, we have the capability and we can share this with the entire world. Never this was possible. Please let's make it happen. Um, I love what you said about um, we, we want to blossom as human beings. A little closer please. Oh sorry, we want to blossom as human beings, that's how we find fulfillment. I'm actually nervous talking to you. Um, but with new opportunities also comes fear and self-doubt. And I'm wondering, how can we navigate these very strong forces in order to reach our fulfillment, I guess, and our potential? See, uh, there is you, there is a world. Or let's say there is you and there is the rest of the existence. Those forces you cannot ignore, they're all there. I want to fly away, can I fly away? No, there's gravity which holds me down. Like this in every activity, in every possibility, there are forces which support us, there are forces which hold us, there are forces which rise us, there are forces which put us down, all kinds are there. You ever been uh, surfing? No? Okay, if you go either wind surfing or uh, hang gliding or ocean surfing, somebody rides the wave. Somebody who doesn't figure it out gets crushed by the same wave, isn't it so? Hello? Yes. Somebody just… just riding on the wave, <laughs> somebody else phew, drowning beneath the wave. Same wave, isn't it? What is the difference, do you think? Somebody figured it out. Somebody did not pay enough attention to figure it out. The most fundamental thing that you need to figure out is not the waves, not the wind, not the sunlight. The most fundamental thing that you need to figure out is, how does this function? Now you're talking about your fears, your anxieties, your struggles. These are not waves and wind and fire and something else. These are just your own thoughts and emotions, isn't it? See, please under… I'll make it extremely simple for you. Human beings are suffering, all right? Variety of suffering. There's a champion sitting there <laughs> But I'm asking all of you, leave those people who are in war zones, who are in extreme poverty and some violence, leave them. We can excuse them, because for them suffering is coming from outside. How much of your suffering ever has come from outside? I'm asking, when was the last time you were stabbed with a dagger, even though you were living in London? 
I, I hear a lot of knife crimes in London. When was the last time you were stabbed? Hey, even you were not. No? Yes, I know, but I'm asking when were you stabbed? No, not you, nobody in this room. So, what I'm saying is, the amount of suffering that coming to you from outside is minuscule. Rest is on self-help, isn't it? Hmm? Why are you generating suffering for yourself? What is it? Simply because you have not taken charge of your faculties. What is it that you're suffering? If you ask people, you will see, even you, let me ask you, you are capable of suffering that happened ten years ago to you, isn't it? Ten years ago this happened, still suffering. And you are capable of suffering what may happen to you day after tomorrow already. Yes or no? So you are not suffering life, let me make this very clear to you. You are not suffering life, you are suffering two most fantastic faculties that only human beings have, which no other creature have, which is a vivid sense of memory and a fantastic sense of imagination. You are suffering your memory and your imagination. So what you are asking is, please make me like an earthworm once again, I will live peacefully. If we remove half your brain, for sure you will sit here peacefully, isn't it? <laughs> no fear, no anxiety, no trouble, nothing. So the problem is, you are complaining about your evolutionary forward movement of life. You want to be back there. If you had the brain of an earthworm, stomach full, you would be so peaceful. Is this the way to handle this possibility, I'm asking you? Hmm? This is the greatest privilege that every little thing that happens to us, we remember vividly. And we can use this memory to project and try to create those things in our life. This is our greatest privilege which no other creature has on this planet. At least on this planet, we are the most privileged life, but we are the messiest one. Simply because neither your parents, nor your teachers, nor your institutions have done anything as to how to handle your own faculties. They're teaching you how to mess with the globe and of course you messed very effectively. Nothing about how to do this. If you knew how to conduct this, would you create fear for yourself, anxiety for yourself, misery for yourself or joy for yourself? I'm asking you. Joy. So the problem is not with the world, the problem is, as I said, you have a super, super computer, you are refusing to read the user's manual. <coughs> Just by accident you want to handle this, it's a mess. Uh, last question. Uh, Hi, um, thank you very much. Uh, I'm extremely impressed and I have a request, one request and one question. First, I will uh, put forward my request. So, we want to be the lucky ones uh, who are in the same room to experience the vibe and aura that Ranveer Singh did when you danced with him. So, <laughs> would you do that for us here in LSC? Guys, I want you to clap if you're up for it. We, we get fulfillment. <laughs> What's a <the> question? <laughs> I, uh, me, after the dance or before that? Okay, my, my question. There are no so I'm extremely, around. extremely. There's no rock band here, so. So I'm extremely impressed how you've said that religion shouldn't be a national goal, it should be something very personal, and we should talk about the right thing. Uh, but someone. You know, as, as someone so many people look up to, you know, don't you think you have a social responsibility to voice your concerns about some specific parties who are trying to uh, spread religious extremism? Or Because we can't please everyone, can we? So what are your thoughts on that? Because I told you, uh, you, you just said that you don't endorse a political party and you don't want to influence anyone uh, to vote for someone. But don't you think we should stand up against something which is wrong? I am not against anything, that's what I want you to understand. I am for humanity. Human beings have come in variety of ways. 
it's okay with me. Because if all of them became like me, I wouldn't want to live in this world. They're all different. That's why at night, look at them, how different they are, each one. That is why it is nice. But all the idiots are trying to make everybody like themselves. Just imagine in your home, if there's one more person just like you, could you live there? <laughs> one is too much, isn't it? <laughs> but they want a world full of their own kind. So, I'm not against anybody. It's okay, everybody's saying what they're saying. As long as they don't get overly empowered, it's all right, they're expressing their opinions. Opinions are like cataracts. The more you have them, the less you see. So I'm trying to bring clarity to them also. People say, Sadhguru, you are seen with the celebrity, why did you sit with this person? You are seen with this politician, why did you sit with this person? I say, see, for the last twenty-two years, I've been working in the prisons, both India and United States. I'm constantly with murderers, rapists and all kinds of people. They are also okay with me because human beings do all these things. The question is only, will we as a generation create a situation where human beings can evolve into a higher possibility or do you want to shoot this one, hang that one, do that, do this, is this your solution? Believe me, those people who thought they are bringing solutions forcefully always cause the worst kind of situations on the planet. Yes or no? Those who believed that they're bringing a solution forcefully, they did the worst things, isn't it so? Those who believed they were going to send you to heaven, they did the worst things. Those who believed forcefully they will level everybody and bring equality, they did the most horrendous things on the planet. We don't want to miss… make the same mistake. I want you to understand, those mistakes are no more affordable with modern weaponry and modern technology, those mistakes are no more possible on this planet. If we commit the mistake of what… Uh, I'm not supposed to mention these names, what Mussolini, Adolf Hitler's, Joseph Stalin's and whatever the religious nutcases have done, if we attempt the same thing in twenty-first century, we'll finish the whole humanity. We cannot afford that anymore. So the only way for all of us to progress is that whatever I think of you, you act, we accept you for who you are right now and see how we can all be on the same page, at least on a few things. We all want health, we want all… all of us want to live joyfully, peacefully. At least on these things we are on the same page. Well, you worship that god in the east, I worship this in the west, I… somebody worships something else, somebody else doesn't worship a damn thing, it's their choice. Let them do whatever. But the important thing is, human needs, fundamental human needs are this. Once physical needs are taken care of, which fortunately for this generation, like never before, though still there are complaints, there are segments of society unfortunately left out of that, Still the largest number of human beings, their survival is better organized than ever before. Yes or no? It is so. Today if you have the money, you can go to the store and buy what you need for the next one year and not step out of your house and still manage. Believe me, if you were here hundred years ago or thousand years ago, if you want to start your day, you must take your bucket and walk a mile to River Thames to get your water. Most of you are not even fit to carry a bucket full of water for a mile anymore. <laughs> yes or no? So survival is better organized than ever before. Forever we've had problems of food, water, shelter, clothing. For the first time, all of you have five times more clothing than what your grandparents had. Yes or no? Huh? All of you have five times more clothing than what your grandparents had. You are also eating. Right now, how to eat less is the big deal. <laughs> this is the first generation which has to be worried about how much to eat. 
Always every generation of people, when they sat down for a meal, they stuffed as much as they could into themselves because there was so much physical activity to do. If you see the last generations of people, how they ate, when they sat down for a meal, they would sit like this, you know, in India they'll sit on the floor, they'll eat and it's full and they'll eat little more and little more and little more because there is so much to do physically. If you don't eat like that, you'll run out of gas. Literally it's like gas, you know, like filling the tank. You want to fill as much as you can. This is the first generation which has to be conscious of how much to consume because otherwise you'll become like a balloon because you're not doing anything. So everything is better organized than ever before. Survival is better than ever before. This is the time to transform human consciousness. To transform or to raise human consciousness, we are doing various levels of activity. One, you know, you must sit through this in many different ways, otherwise you, will, you won't understand why we are doing variety of things for this purpose, because all these things have to be done. If you don't know all the pawns, there is no game. I want all of you to participate in whichever way you can to raise human consciousness, either by yourself or seek our help. We are doing many things across the world. Please be a part of it. The important thing is, all human beings, if their focus is towards their well-being and everybody's well-being, irrespective of who they are. He is a... he is a bad neighbor for me, but I want him to be well. All right? This is important. I don't have to say, no, you're a fantastic neighbor, you're not, but I want you well. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not making a national commentary, please do not understand. Whether he's uh, from uh, what, uh, from Pakistan or from Kerala, it means the same thing. I'm saying, <laughs> see, I don't have to say fantastic things about you. Yes, you're a bad neighbor, but I want you well, because I know if you are well, you will be fine with me. When you're not well, you will try to infect me with the same thing. It's very important everybody around you are well if you want to be well, isn't it so? Uh, this is why I'm saying be absolutely selfish. It is just that. Why selfishness and greed also you're stingy? Hmm? Why in that also you're stingy? At least in that you can be generous, you can't give away things, all right? At least be absolutely selfish, no? What I want for myself, I want for everybody, hmm? Let's create a, a... an absolutely selfish world. That means what I want for myself, I want for everybody in the world. Let's make it happen, thank you. I saw you were beating your foot like no, this. No, no, I was just you testing oh. if it can hold me, but <laughs> <laughs> So would you like to entertain the request? When no graces? music here, please. <laughs> okay, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, thank you very... No, no. Thank you very much, Sadhguru. Thank you.